like that. Once again, it's on What's Up World. It's your boy Vic XL, and this is the Ryan Dirty Radio Show, the Ryan Dirty Podcast. We'll bring you the best and what's next right now. All right, we're bridging the gap between hip hop and everyday life. All right, all right. So make sure y'all visit us first and foremost at www.ryandirtyradio.com and Get the latest news, views, and interviews. All right? All right. So, today is Sunday, March the 3rd. And I got to say one time for our brand new sponsor, one time for Teotronics. All right? Teotronics are the next wave in electronics and headphones and head gear when it comes to audio recording and listening. All right? So, definitely one time for Teotronics. And you can definitely visit them at www.teotronics.com. Com. All right. One time for WMR Music Group. WMR Music Group, they're a marketing, promotion, and branding company. If you're artists out there and you're looking to get your career to the next level, make sure you visit WMRmedia.com and find out what they can do for your career today and find out how you can sign up for their 60-day artist development program and start getting your music in places you never imagined it could be. I also got to say one time for Dr. Juice Cleanse. Dr. Juice Cleanse is an all-natural cleanser that does all kind of amazing things for your body. All kind of amazing things for your body that can help you when it comes to healthy living, when it comes to losing weight, when it comes to stabilizing your blood pressure, when it comes to having a balanced pH system. Definitely Dr. Juice Cleanse can definitely handle that for you. All you got to do is visit them at www.drjuicecleanse.com Find out more about this amazing product and how you can start feeling better and living healthier today. All right? All right. Now, like I said, today is Sunday, March the 3rd, and I got to say happy birthday to some celebrities out there. Definitely got to say happy birthday to a Houston rapper, my man Lil Flip. Today is his birthday. Also got to say happy birthday to legendary West Coast rapper, the creator of the song, Wild Thing, as well as the creative song Funky Cold Medina. Gotta say happy birthday to rapper, actor, Mr. Tone Loke. He turns 53 years old today. Also gotta say happy birthday to my man Montana of 300. Independent artist, definitely, definitely doing his thing. He turns 30 years old today. Also gotta say happy birthday to the winner of the Skills Challenge at NBA All-Star Weekend a couple weeks ago. Happy birthday to my man, Jason Tatum. He turns 21 years old today, representing those Boston Celtics. All right? Last but not least, as I flip over to Facebook, I got to say happy birthday to one of my one of my player partners, my man, Trill Brill. Definitely an artist, definitely doing his thing. Got to say happy birthday to him. He's over in Dubai, definitely living that good life and making great music. All right. All right. Now, I'm going to flip on over a little bit. Oh, today was National I Want You to Be Happy Day. Hopefully, you guys celebrate it. And the way to observe and celebrate National I Want You to Be Happy Day was, it's very, very simple. Do something kind for someone to make them smile, give them a flower. Fellas, give your ladies a flower. When was the last time you gave your lady a flower and it wasn't a holiday? Um, you know, take someone out to eat. Say something kind. Um, today, the purpose of the day was just to put a smile on someone's face. Like I said, today was National. I want you to be happy today. So hopefully all of us, all of us done our best to observe this holiday and we made someone happy and we made them smile. Because, you know, what making people smile makes me smile. All right? All right, now, let me flip on over here to a little celebrity news. See what we got going on. Got all kind of things going on since the last show. Can I say one time, my man Anderson Pack, um, he has a, a surprise album on the way before the year ends for his fans. It's going to be a little secret album. But he's definitely, definitely doing his thing. All right? All right. And, you know what? I got to say this. This especially for all my youngsters. You know, y'all been doing that dance, the floss, however the hell you do it. Well, you know, it was created by this kid called the Backpack Kid. Well, you know what? He says he's leaving the, He's not leaving the dancing world, but he's moving on and expanding his wing because now he is rapping. He's embarked on a new rap career. He's created a song called The Floss, so definitely be on the lookout for it. 
It's by the Backpack Kid, and the name of that joint is Flossed. So be on the lookout for it, all right? Here's a little death row news, especially since my man Suge Knight is locked up. It seems like my man Suge Knight tried to sign DMX. Matter of fact, tried to sign DMX while Tupac was still alive. Now, wouldn't that have been crazy insane if Tupac and DMX was on the same level and the same label at the height of their career? That's crazy. Imagine Tupac and DMX. Imagine what that collaboration would have sounded like. That thing would have been insane. All right. I also got to say congratulations to my man T Pain. He was the winner of one of my favorite competition reality shows, The Mad Singer. That's right. T Pain, if you don't know, T Pain was the monster and he won the Mad Singer first season. And also, speaking of T Pain, he says, T. Wayne, Volume 2, even though Volume 1 never came out, T. Wayne, his joint album with Lil Wayne, is in progress, is being made, and is going to see the light of day. So definitely, definitely one time for T-Pain. Hopefully we will get a chance to see that T. Wayne album. And um, I can't wait to hear it because I definitely like the songs they've done together. All right, speaking of things getting done together, um, y'all remember... Some months back when I reported that my man Shafari had been jacked for cash and jewels. Well, three men have been indicted for robbing him, and hopefully justice will be served. All right, Shafari, now you don't have to go on nobody else's show crying, feeling bad because you got robbed, because hopefully the three men who partook in that heinous crime will go to jail. All right, got to say one time, my man Will Smith definitely making big moves. You know, Will Smith, um, you've seen him uh, dabbing on buildings and skydiving and doing all kind of crazy stuff. Well, he has turned his bucket list challenge into a series on Facebook. So, you know what? Will Smith and Jada Pinkett are definitely, definitely capitalizing on Facebook because she has her show, The Red Table on Facebook, and now he is going to have his bucket list challenge as a series on Facebook, too. So definitely one time for my man Will Smith. Definitely keeping it moving, definitely keeping it innovating, and definitely doing his thing. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll let you know about birthdays. I'll let you know what today national day is. I'll let you know about my amazing sponsors, as well as letting you in on celebrity birthdays and news. Now it's time for me to do what I enjoy doing most, and that's letting you hear from the people who are definitely moving and shaking in the streets and in our community and doing their thing. So tonight's no different, and I'd like to welcome to the Round Dirty platform, Miss Enigma. How are you doing tonight, ma'am? I'm doing great. How are you? Man, I am having an amazing day. We just had some rough Tornado weather up in my area. But other than that, man, it's been great weather, great day. I'm just living my best life. How about you? I'm doing great. I'm glad you're pulling through in that stormy weather. All right. All right. So, look, let's jump into it. The first thing i got to ask, um, let the people know where you're from and how did the name Enigma come about? Well, I'm from the DMV area, born and raised in Maryland. Enigma came about, I was coming into my craft and learning what I wanted to do in the music industry, so I'm still trying to figure it out, so that's where the name Enigma came from. It's a mystery, and I hope that everybody will be along for the ride and me discover where I'm going with it. All right. Why did you choose to spell it with the three? Well, there's three parts to Enigma. There's the lyricist. A messenger, a message in every track, and a little psycho in there. You know, I like, you know, uh, Eminem, Tech Nine, and things to that effect. They um, shape my lyricism, so got to pay old to them in a sense. All right. Now, um, what was it like? I'm going to go backwards. What was it like growing up in the DMV, and when did you decide to that you wanted to embark on a musical journey? I've always loved music. Um, but growing up in the DMV, it, it's not as easy as some may think. And granted, I came from a, I guess you could say, middle class type area. But 
there was a lot of, you you had to get you know uh, develop a thick skin in a sense like there was definitely people going at you at the lunch tables and whatnot in high school so that kind of developed my battle rap lyricism in a sense um yeah <laughs> All right, now being a female and and basically, obviously, you kept your battle rap sword sharpened. Uh, what was it like, and how often were you challenged to battles growing up? Um, well, based off of your appearance, you know everybody wants to come at you for how you look and things to that effect. So you develop a thick skin there, how you dress and things to that effect. Um, but what really shaped me, you know was uh, my musical inspirations like Lauren Hill, like I said, Eminem Tech Nine, Immortal Technique, like what but with Lauren Hill learning how to love yourself in a sense and in and, and loving yourself, learning how to, you know, turn that light on others when they try and come at you in a negative light and just try and, you know, come back at them. So yeah. All right now growing up in a in a middle class household um, how were receptive was your family when you told them that you wanted to get into the music business and pursue it? Oh Lord. Well, my mother, she wasn't, um, she wasn't too happy about that. She wanted me to definitely, uh, my grandfather was Navy. So she wanted me to stay true to the military career and everything like that. And I did that. Now I'm still in the military and everything like that, but music, it just, it resonates in me. So once I told her about it and everything like that, she kind of, she wasn't as supportive as I would have liked her to be, but once she heard my music and the message behind it, she started to support me. Okay. All right, so you mentioned being in the military. Being in the military comes along with a large amount of discipline. How have you been able to take your military experience and the discipline needed to succeed in the military and transform it into a music career? Well, you focus. You, you make a long list of the things that you need to do, and then you put your feet to the ground and you get it done. So just persistency is key and just pushing at it, like not giving up, just keeping going no matter what. You've got your goal and doing whatever you need to do to attain that. All right. Now, being in the military, do you feel like it has hindered your music career or do you feel like it's helped? Because I know being in the military, you get to meet people from all over the world, all walks of life. So how has that affected the progression of your music career? Well, there's points and times where, you know, at the end of the day, I'm a military member, so that will come first. If, if there's a call to duty, I have to, you know, go and serve. But the command that I'm at now, they're very flexible and everything to that effect, and they're very supportive of my music career. Uh, if the point in time comes where I get signed, I will have to choose between the two. But until then, they haven't done anything to hinder it. All right. So you mentioned artists like Eminem, Immortal Technique, Tech Nine. Um, I've got to say that is a very unique list of artists when it comes to a female. I don't really hear a lot of females saying those are in their groups of favorite artists. Uh, what made you gravitate to those artists and how have they inspired you? Well, I came across like Eminem by accident. My sister had the Eminem show stashed up in her closet. So uh, I was looking through her closet one day and I came across the Eminem show and I started listening to it. And my mom, she was more into, you know, like out in Maryland, we have a station called 102.3 and that's where they play the classics like the Isley Brothers and whatnot. And, and she'd have her stations where she listened to gospel and whatnot. So I couldn't really listen to Eminem and things to that effect with her. But my dad would let me be in my comfort zone. So with that, I learned how to be comfortable with who I am and embrace the different aspects. Like Eminem, he's very particular with how he crafts his, his lyrics and everything to that effect. So it was more so not for commercial, but for to be heard. And not only that, for to have a message behind it, but intricately phrased. So that's how I was shaped. But that was a mortal technique. It was more so he he had a, a broader message. It, it delved along, along the lines of conspiracy theories and whatnot, but there's a lot of truth in conspiracy. So that shaped the messenger area of Enigma. Um, I also like Danny Brown and Vince Staples. You know, Vince Staples deals with, you know, the, the he does a lot of gangster stuff, but like the grimy aspect of, you know, uh, cultural appropriation and things to that effect. And Danny Brown, he's just, outright a whole nother character on its own. So it was just a melting pot like the DMV where I'm from of cultures in a sense. And I just took that and I enhanced upon it in my own way. 
All right, now, and I definitely, definitely agree because the, the list of artists that you're naming are number one. They're very strongly lyrical. They're very strong with their opinions. Um, they're very thought-provoking. And you're, you're right. It's like a melting pot of artists, which the DMV is like a melting pot of artists because the DMV doesn't have a set style. Um, I've heard a lot of artists from the DMV. Right from the DMV and the style is just it, it sounds like a melting pot so when we listen to Enigma yes. what will we get from you as an artist you definitely get a message within every track I try not to be you know hammer down in regards to a message I want you to enjoy yourself all the well but I want you to learn something at the same point in time so that's what I bring into it dark undertones there's a story behind everything that I do deep within there but there's definitely well-crafted lyricism and something you can bob your head to I wanted to be able to uh, I want my tracks to convey to where you're able to enjoy yourself but at the same point in time you're learning something all right um at what at what age did you actually start writing and what age did you really get serious about your writing well I've been writing poetry for a very long time, ever since I was younger. Um, I have read a, I'm, I'm actually adopted. I have read a, a poem in front of Antoine Fisherman um, when I was younger during my adoption ceremony. But in regards to rapping, I literally just decided to do, I was not too happy and I, I love to embrace where music is going and it's an ever evolving thing, but I wasn't too happy where there was not a particular message in the mainstream industry. So literally less than a year ago, I started rapping. All right. You mentioned being adopted. Uh, tell me a little bit about that journey and how that has affected you as an adult as well as your music. Well, well, you learn how to love yourself. And in this industry, you, you've got to know how to love yourself because there's going to be a lot of people that don't love you. So you've got to be firm within yourself as far as your moral values and things to that effect. So being adopted, you know, my mother abandoned me at a young age. So there was this struggle where I went through where I couldn't forgive her even in her passing for abandoning me and I had to learn to grow and love myself and understand that if nobody wants me I want me and there's a message within that for many people who have you know have been through the same thing who have been abandoned or where they may feel like nobody wants them you've got to learn with at the end of the day to love yourself so that's where it all starts all right, through your and music. That's what my music shapes around loving yourself and being comfortable within yourself. All right, and those are great. You know what? Especially with today's youth, uh, self love is very, very important when it comes to some of the challenges they face. Um, will we hear any tales or stories or any mentions of being adopted throughout your music? Definitely, definitely. I, I have a, a track called Voices. I haven't put it out there yet, but I'm working on several tracks that I'm getting ready to release. And Voices is one of those where I speak on that subject. All right. Um, right now, what are you currently working on? Are you working on a mix CD? Are you working on an album? Or are you just releasing singles? Uh, right now, I'm releasing singles, but I'm definitely working on a broader spectrum, an EP called The Age of the Aquarius, and I'm an Aquarius, so it's more so dealing with the aspect of technology. There's some wordplay in there regarding technology and several tracks, like the games track and things to that effect that deal with technology and whatnot. So, yeah, so I'm, I'm working on an album uh, EP right now. Okay. Also, when it comes to being a female artist um, and this being a male-dominated industry, um, have you had any issues when it comes to men or your male counterparts taking you serious? Yes. Um, I, I started off on this app called Battle Me. And it's, it's like the new underground in a sense. And there's a lot of males that want to challenge females. They don't, they don't see us as competition. They, they, you've got a lot of females in the industry where it's more so uh, uh, the, the way you look is put on display versus your lyricism. And they begin to challenge me, and I came at them just as a male would in a sense. And then they back down. So I... I, I I went into that app, hit the ground running in regards to that, and 
they started to back down. So you just have that. Then they stop looking at it as a male female type thing. My ultimate goal is for it to be the lyricism put to the forefront and everything else put to the back burner. All right. Now, speaking of lyricism pushed to the forefront and things in the back burner, how do you feel about uh, sexism when it comes to 90% of females in the hip hop game? It's like most females rap about how good their sex is or how they want to be paid or like how do you feel about that when it comes to female MCs? Well, I'll never I'll never down a female MC for, you know, getting her bag at the end of the day. Like I, I also listen to Lil Kim a lot. And then, you know, Nicki Minaj and now Cardi B's out there doing her thing. And I got all the most respect for that. But at the end of the day, I, I don't have any qualms, qualms with it, but I, I don't want that to be all there is. I, I plan to be that difference. You know, I plan to be what blurs the lines between, you know, females talking about sex in their body and everything like that. And then instead of talking about, you know, having sex with, you know, them and things to that effect, have sex with somebody's mind in a sense. Bring that intellect into the equation. That's what I'm trying to do, trying to push that to the forefront and leave all the body parts on the back burner. All right, I definitely, definitely get it. I definitely get it. Also, when it comes to females, um, it appears like any time, like there are a million male rappers and it seems like they're always willing to share the top spot. But when it comes to females, it seems like whenever there's a female in the top spot, the female underneath her is gunning for her or there's always some underlying beef. Do you think that comes from women just being catty or do you think that's something that's manufactured by men in the industry? I think it's definitely something manufactured by the industry. I mean, I guess the guys love to see a good cat fight, but... I mean, at the end of the day, like, just everybody's different in their own way, and they're great in their own way. There's no need to compare. Lil' Kim's not like Nicki. Nicki's not like Cardi B, you know? At the end of the day, there's so many differences in their lyricism. Yes, at the end of the day, you pay homage and you take things, because nothing is original nowadays. It's all you, you feed off of the next person, in a sense. So it, it's all about evolution. So just pay homage and move forward with it. Like, there's no need to be catty. Pay your respects and move forward. Okay. All right. All right. Now, as you work on your project, The Age of the Aquarius, you're working with KE on the track. How'd that come about? Well, <clears throat> his manager hit me up on Instagram, and um, he called me up. KE called me up and everything like that, and he he's a great motivational speaker. He was talking to me about, you know, how you should focus on not just, you know, putting out tracks and how, it's more so how to expand and, and, and develop a business out of it and not just be a temporary moment. Like he, so, so he hit me up on Instagram and, and we started collabing that way. So he, he's a great person and, and I look forward to continuing to work with him. He's really looked out for me thus far. All right. That's, <clears throat> that's, that's definitely, definitely, definitely what's up. Working with a legendary person like him, I know you say he's a great motivational speaker, but how does that make you feel as your product grows um, as you start to reach a wider fan base? That makes, it, it makes me feel humble, but amazed that somebody who's a, a Grammy nominated producer would be able to step off that large pedestal that he's on because he has tracks that I used to, you know, dance to in the club. Like, he's got hit and, and want to pick up the next person. Like, that, I, I feel humble. And I, I, I learn and I, I take from that experience to help others. All right. Um, if people hear your music and they said, this person reminds me of, because we always tend to put people in a box, what box do you think they'll put you in? They'll most likely do what most do. They'll group me in the category with females, so they probably say a mix between Remy Ma and Lauren Hill. Okay. All right. All right. That's definitely, definitely, definitely a great company to be in, though. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. When can people expect the age of the Aquarius? Well, I'm working on it now, and with... KE working with me, you know, putting that fire under my butt. 
I expect to have it coming out late this year, okay. around fall. All right. Social media. How do you feel about social media and how has it affected your career? Well, I don't really pay too much attention to social media. Nowadays, you can buy followers and likes and things to that effect. I try not to measure my worth in, in, in the aspect of others. At the end of the day, I feel like I've been given a gift, and I want to share that with the world. And how they receive it, I appreciate it either way. And I try not to get consumed in the negative feedback. You just got to keep pushing forward. All right. Has there ever been any point in time in your career that you wanted to give up? A lot of artists experience that at some point in time where you want to give up. But when you want to give up, most of the time it's right when you're in the midst of a breakthrough. So you got you got to just keep pushing through that. You're your own worst enemy, and you can't let that negative self-talk get to you. Okay. All right, so look, let's do this. We're going to end this interview with your song, Make That Money. But before we get to that song, let the people know how to keep up with you when it comes to the World Wide Web, social media, or however you choose to be kept up with. Well, right now you can find me on Instagram at the underscore real underscore enigma with a three. You can also find me on Facebook at the Age of the Aquarius. As well as Band Lab, if anybody wants to collab, I'm always open to collabing with other artists. At the end of the day, I believe that I have a brainchild, you have a brainchild. Let's get that together and make beautiful things. You can find me there at Enigma underscore Soul Star. All right. Do me one favor and introduce this record. All righty, guys. This is Make That Money by me, yours truly, Enigma. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All righty, you too.
one time for Enigma. That was her joint, Make the Money. It's your boy, Vic XL, man. Y'all definitely, definitely appreciate y'all for checking out the show. And y'all make sure y'all keep it locked and check us out in the AM with another edition of The Duel. Y'all have a great night. Peace.